Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All praise due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show guidance. We bear witness that there is no God who is worthy of worship but Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his last messenger. Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to a new episode of the Prophet's Prayer. We're still trying to gain khushu' in the salah and develop a state of tranquility and humility while praying, while standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in the last episode, we discussed many things, amongst which we discussed the evil influence of a shaitan on insan while he is praying. And a shaitan is striving his maximum effort to mislead the person and confuse him while praying. Of course, that's his main task in this life. Somebody asked, is there any way just that we can get rid of a shaitan forever? That a shaitan is after us everywhere we go. Even in the salah, I've been trying. Yes. Where? And when? And how? In paradise, inshallah. And that's why that to get to paradise, to get to enter heaven, that you have to be sincere in your salah and you have to be khasha. And inshallah, by some practice and some effort, we can develop this state of khushua. We have to keep in mind that while we're praying, we pray and combine between two feelings, hope and fear. We're hoping that Allah will accept our prayer. And if Allah accepts from us our prayer, then we're successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Indeed, Allah only accepts from the righteous ones. And if this is the case, if Allah accepts from us, then we're successful. The Prophet ﷺ says, On the Day of Judgment, the very first question about our actions in life will be concerning a salah. And if it was done properly, with proper tahara, proper khushu' and ruku' then the servant is, فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ ونجح. Then the servant will be successful, and that's indeed the true success. But if not, فَقَدْ خَابَ وخسر. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about the second part in the process of developing khushu'a, which is wording of distractions, and trying to eliminate, remove and get rid of the factors that adversely affect our khushu'a in as salah Those factors or those things could be things that we see, things we smell, things we hear, things we feel while praying. For instance, Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, that Allah the Almighty is looking at, looking towards the person while he is praying. فَإِذَا الْتَفَتْ انصَرَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ And whenever the servant of Allah turns away, turns around in the salah, so he's physically there, but he turns around, Allah would turn away from him. And how could he turn away? By two things, either by the heart or by the sight. It's very, very important while praying to keep your sight focused on the place of sujood. Of course, except when you come to the middle tashahud or the last tashahud, while pointing with the index finger towards the qibla, only there you look towards the index finger. Other than that, throughout your entire prayer, you're focused by your eyesight towards the place of sujood, where you're going to put your head and nose. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about turning around, looking right, looking left, or up during the Salah. He says, this is ikhtilasun yakhtalisuhu shaytan. This is some sort of stealing that a shaytan steals away from your prayer. So will you pay attention? Will you know that when you pray, you should eliminate anything that could distract your attention? Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ardah, 
mention a very important hadith. And this is someone hadith, by the way, collected by Imam al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him. He said that once the Prophet ﷺ was praying at home, in the hujra of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala an harda, she had a sit or some sort of a curtain which had some tasawir, pictures or paintings. The Prophet ﷺ, after he finished the prayer, right away he ordered her to remove it. Why? Because it distracted his attention while praying. There is something in front of you, something that you could see, something around you, something that you could hear. So what about those who pray while the TV is on? They're praying and listening to the news, or praying and listening to the answer machine. So well, once the person will finish the prayer, right away will pick up the phone and say, yes, I heard your message. Yes, indeed. You heard your message, but you did not pay attention to any of Allah's messages. So, you were there by your body, but your mind and heart were somewhere else. So, while praying before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep in mind His presence. And if you can see Him, then Allah is seeing you. This is very, very important to keep in mind. Well, once the Prophet ﷺ also was praying while wearing an outer garment, which was uh, having some designs, after the salah, the Prophet ﷺ took it, took it off immediately. He got rid of it and said, give me something that's plain. When I pray, I don't like to have anything that distracts my attention from the prayer. So, the sight, the sight, once you look around, right or left, the shaitan succeeds. Once you look up, you disobey the Prophet ﷺ. Some people think it's okay to look up. No. The Prophet ﷺ says that they should quit, and if they do not, Allah might take away their eyesight. So please, while in salah, focus on the spot of your sujood that's better in regards of bringing khushu'a and tranquility in the salah. Well, other factors that uh, distracts our attention in the salah, things that we smell. Uh, very nice food, delicious one, especially if you're hungry. What to do if it is a prayer time, if you just came back from work, and meanwhile the dinner has been served? Which one you give precedence to? Some would say, no, I'm going to pray first, but you're starving and the food has been served. As long as you're praying, you're smelling the food, you're imagining the delicious food, and you're not paying any attention in your salah. You don't know even what you've recited if you got to recite anything. You don't remember how many rak'ah you prayed. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said that a person who's starving, a person who's hungry, has no salah. So what to do? Begin with your dinner. He says in another hadith, if the salah is due, if the iqamah has been called, if the salah has been established, and dinner has been served, begin with dinner and do not rush take your time eat slowly why because the purpose of the salah is to understand what you're reciting is to enjoy being in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being in touch with him but if you're being there physically with your body while your mind and stomach is somewhere else then it is without any benefit it's useless so you should not do that also if a person had the urge to answer the call of nature, if he needs to go to the bathroom to urinate or defecate or even to pass wind, do that first. Do not pray while resisting answering the call of nature. لا صلاة لجائع لا صلاة بحضرة طعام ولا وهو يدافع أخبثين There is no prayer for a person who is hungry and the food has been served not for a person who is resisting or having the urge to answer the call of nature. al akhbathan either urinating or defecating. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that there is no prayer for a person who is retaining the urine. He has the urge to urinate, but he's resisting. Nor for a person who is resisting passing wind. Uh, you see some of the children when they're praying and they want to pray so that they can rush to the bathroom 
I call it the titi dance. Now, you have to have tranquility in the salah. So, marfa' hatta ta'tadil until you stand up straight. So, marka' hatta tatma'inna raka'an then bow down until you tranquil in your ruku' similarly in your sujood. وَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ كُلِّهَا And do likewise in your entire salah. These are the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَا صَلَاةَ لِحَاقِنٍ وَلَا حَاقِنٍ A person who is resisting, either urinating, defecating, or wind, has no salah. Also, if a person is so tired and he wants to sleep, especially during the night prayer, sleep. There is no burden on you. Why? Once the Prophet ﷺ entered the masjid and he saw that there is a rope that was stretched between two poles of the masjid. He said, what is this? They said, it's for Zainab. That whenever she gets tired or sleepy, she rests on this rope. She hangs on it. The Prophet ﷺ said, undo it. Take it off. لِيُصَلِّ أَحَدُكُمْ نَشَاطَةً Let any of you pray as long as he feels active and fresh. But if you feel sleepy, lie down, sleep, rest. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا إِذَا نَعَسَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيَرْقُدْ If any of you feels sleepy, let him lie down, let him rest. Why? So that you understand what you're supplicating. Lest you might supplicate against yourself instead of praying for yourself. That's why Allah prohibited initially the believers from praying if they were intoxicated. One of the stages of prohibiting drinking so that you understand what you're reciting. Otherwise, rest. Well, also the Prophet ﷺ prohibited the person who's praying from copying Animals, after Allah honored him by being a humankind in three positions. He prohibited the person of pecking like a crow or like a rooster by praying fast and quickly, not completing ruku' and sujood. He prohibited him from turning around like a fox and from sitting like a dog, especially in sujood. If we keep in mind all the factors which we talked about that would help us to develop khushua and eliminate and ward off any distractions, inshallah, we will be amongst al khashi'een whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ May Allah accept from all of us. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.